everyone jumbo jumbo bonjour i hope you are all well in the lord and welcome back to this yet another session where we shall be looking at ways to migrate and yes being the beginning of the year i know we are like midway done but yeah it's still the beginning of the year i just want to point out to you ways that are very easy for you to migrate to canada and actually these ways are applicable to migrate to all other countries however i will be specifically looking at canada yes so there are very easy ways that you can try and migrate to Canada. And if that has been your dream, you might want to stick around to the very end of this short video. And I know how you can do this. After this video, I will be going into details on each of the methods. So keep tuned and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so that you're notified when i send out that video on the specific pathway so thank you so much and stay around to the very end yes so without much ado let's jump out straight to the easiest ways to migrate in canada this year so way number one and this is something i mentioned even in the previous year is through the student pathway yes as a student you have a big chance to migrate to canada because canada loves international students because they are source of income you know many colleges are always looking to enroll international students and you know the benefit to that for you is that you get quality education so what you must do is to migrate as a student and be able to eventually live in canada you need to one make sure that the school that you select to go and study is a designated learning institution so that means it's approved by the government to provide higher education so i will be sharing more on this and then number two make sure that the course that you do is at least one year or longer you know the longer the better you can come for a postgraduate master's a post diploma course or even a phd but make sure it is one year or longer so that if you apply for a postgraduate work permit then you can get a bit of time to work and accumulate the experience required to apply for express entry the second way i'm sorry if you see me looking aside i'm just referring to my notes but the second way and which has been showing us a lot of promises even in the previous year as um uh, federal uh, draws were not happening is through the provincial nomination program. This is where you hear us talking about PNP. So provinces choose or select candidates who apply to their provinces depending on their market needs or something you hear us talk about occupation in demand and also they are hard to fill occupations these occupations are in relation to the noc codes so the noc code helps you to identify your job title the requirements and even the duties you're supposed to do so you need to refer to my video which is about the noc codes so i will link it in the description the good thing about the pnp program is unlike the express entry here the requirement is a very is a lower crs score and also a lower i ETLS score, so your language score, either French or English requirement, is a bit lower than the Federal Express entry. 
Then also they consider in some cases low education or even no education at all. So it's quite different from the express entry and I'll be sharing these um, PNPs where you just apply directly to the provinces. So stay tuned, turn on your notification bell so that you can be notified when I share this video. So there are some provinces like uh, Saskatchewan, that is Saskatchewan Occupation in Demand, Manitoba PNP, uh, Quebec Immigration Program, Nova Scotia PNP, British Columbia PNP, the tech uh, pilot, and then Alberta Immigration Nomination Program, Atlantic Immigration Program, Ontario Tech Pilot Program. These are some of the provincial nomination programs that don't require you to have your express entry. So you can apply directly to the province. However, the condition is once you get a nomination from the province, you need to work and live in that specific province for at least two to three years before you can go somewhere else. Of course, you might come to Canada and probably because you went to Quebec, you want to maybe move to Ontario, which is, you know, the center, the 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 place with the capital of canada yeah so you would need to stay in quebec for at least a minimum of two years all right so we move on to the next one which is dear to my heart because that is how i moved to canada that is through the spousal sponsorship so spousal sponsorship here is whereby you are sponsored by your spouse or you know um your boyfriend or girlfriend and uh, this boyfriend or girlfriend here are called common law partners you need to at least have been with in a relationship with them that you can prove for at least one year so um, this person needs to either be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. So uh, in this case, they will apply to sponsor you. And if approved, now you can come in to Canada as a permanent resident. I'm going to share that video in detail how that process goes. And those that are looking to, you know, date and marry Canadians or permanent residents of Canada, this is a very good road for you to take. The other way you can be sponsored is if you come here as a student. So if you're the student, then you have your wife or husband back home. Now you can sponsor them to come and they will apply for an open work permit whereby, you know, they will come and support you as you study. So then they can work, support you, and they get an open work permit whereby they can work in any field. So I'll be sharing more on this in other videos. Then the other one is a startup visa. So if you're an investor and you have the big bucks, you can apply to the provinces and the provinces will uh, look at it. And if they approve and think that your investment is good and uh, profitable for their province, they will approve you for permanent residence. Then the other one is a work permit. So I know a number of you have been asking me about this. So the work permit is whereby you look for a job and then once you get that job, you get to apply for a work permit to be allowed to come and work. In most cases, the work permits will be given for like one year, two years, or three years. One of the programs in the work permit um, 
Pathways is the International Mobility Program. Uh, this is whereby if you're working for a company that is has its headquarters here or a branch here in Canada, you can ask to be transferred and come and work here. I know maybe many people don't fall under that category. However, I will still share a video on that. And in this way, you will get an open work permit and then you can come work. And through that experience, you can apply to become a permanent resident. Then if you get a job in the demand sectors or occupations, this is IT, artificial intelligence, healthcare, logistics, hospitality. These are some of the top uh, hot occupation um, departments. So if you get a job in that, then you're able to apply for a work permit and come work and live in Canada. The other way is if you come as a researcher, you know, some universities will allow you to come and do your research in Canada. So that is also another way. Then the last but not the least is through the express entry which is the federal or the government controlled um, uh, migration pathway. This is where they are only allow skilled migrants, skilled migrants in occupation uh, NOC code zero, A and B. So this I have tackled in a previous video that I'm going to put in the not, uh, description. So please, go and watch it so in this way you apply and you are put in a pool if you get through the cutoff points that they are looking for then you are given an opportunity to apply for uh, permanent residence so that is it for now and those are the main ways that you can migrate here we shall be looking at uh, them in detail so keep tuned to the videos i'll be sharing soon other than that i wish you the very best god bless you and god keep you and hope to see you here soon bye bye